Ah, uh, yes, Brum. An old favorite of mine. Brum was on in the 1990s and the early 2000s. And let me tell you something. When I say people were captivated by Brum, they were truly captivated. A little yellow remote control car going around the streets of Birmingham, solving crimes, helping people out, getting up to all sorts of everyday life wholesome things. I'm watching you. Now, my peak with the show was in the 1990s. For me, the first two series, you can't beat them. They're great, the best they ever made. But then someone in the 2000s was like, We're going to reignite the Brum franchise after a seven year absence. Shall we keep it the same format? Let's change everything! So it did come back in 2001, it had a new theme, it had a new narrator, it had a, a, a lot of new things. But what I wanted to touch upon today was something a little bit weird. Something that was apparent from the very first episode of this revival. We're going to be taking a look at Brum and the airport. And you might be thinking, Adam, I remember that one and there doesn't seem to be anything too strange about that. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to set to prove you wrong. Let's get to Brum and the airport. Right from the get-go, can you tell money's being saved? Hmm, is that the title sequence from series two? Are we at, what was that word, recycling? But rest assured, Brum is still the same. He's going around Birmingham, interacting with everyday life. No one seems remotely bothered by this sentient car just, you know, going about the place. So our boy makes it to the airport for his airport adventure. And I can only assume this was filmed at Birmingham Airport because the series was filmed in Birmingham. So surely this is Birmingham Airport? Quite a busy airport, no? That's the airport. Oh my god, wait, wait, wait. Can we just acknowledge there's no like actual sign for the airport or anything like that? They've stuck two little cardboard flags with things that barely resemble planes on them and called it an airport. Great work, guys. Well done to everyone. Gee, guys, there's ominous music playing around these two. One of them is tall and one of them is small. I wonder if they might be the bad people. I do enjoy how these two are so intimidated by this this car that is literally the size of like it, it only goes up part way up their leg. It's the big town superstar. The big town superstar? Ah, uh, yes. Wears sunglasses, wears gold watch and rings. Must be superstar. But she clearly knows Brum. Maybe they, you know, maybe they went for a drink one time. But then these bad people happen to have pretty much the exact same case, just a bit more battered. And they, mmm, they didn't get it. But they sense an opportunity coming. Wow, Jules. Because every big town superstar has a suitcase full to the brim with uh, bright, shiny, plasticky jewels. They just, they didn't even try and make them look real. This, that, I mean, to me, that just looks <laughs> insanely fake. <laughs> what was that? I'm trying to duck by the camera. You could tell man is struggling. They did not give him enough room. Why did none of the the various paparazzi or people stood around neither notice nor clock nor make aware that this was happening? So these guys were seemingly going on holiday or going somewhere. Probably escaping the country for their numerous offences. And they only packed a pair of pants each, which is, um... It's a choice. After them, Brum. These people in the background are like, what the what the hell is going on? <laughs> I never thought I'd see in a show that, you know, was aimed at like the under fives that I'd see pretty much elderly abuse. So when the superstar get hits with water, it apparently uh, kills her. She just drops straight to the ground. What you say? Oh, that you only meant well when it cost 
<laughs> Granny's got a broken back. The paparazzi here is the only survivor. <laughs> Why are they all acting like turtles are on their backs? Like, I can't get up. Please help me. You don't want that photo in the papers, do you? What is it? Scandal? Is it? Is it Ill illegal charges? Heinous crimes? No, she's been hit with a bucket of water in him. She just can't get up. <laughs> what is that? I love when they did this rebrand in 2001, they try, because I don't remember him doing this in the 90s version. They try and give him like the equivalent of an angry face. <laughs> <And he just laughs>. I will say though, the camera work does make this look incredibly ominous. You thought that was an inaccurate depiction of how a human on a trolley would go downstairs? Just you wait, bucko. Okay, so the robbers made it, but you know, Brum, Brum is a car. That would be potentially disastrous. How do you, dear viewer, how do you think this vehicle will get down these stairs? <laughs> Brum in this new series can, um, apparently fly. Can we just, can we roll that back just one more time? Did you see that? <laughs> My man flies down the stairs, complete with a whoosh sound effect, which, uh, you no, that's cringe. Ruins it. So Brum is now apparently uh, a superhero, which, to be fair, they tout that constantly. They do it in the in the theme song, in all the promotions. So Brum, it, Brum is Avengers tier now, right? Bags, because uh, let's think about what didn't stop him before. Granny on a trolley didn't stop Brum. Wet floor didn't stop Brum. Uh, stairs, can't forget about stairs. They didn't stop Brum either. But yet, bags on the floor. Genius, guys. That's, that's gonna cook him. <laughs> I like how the tall one has this moment of like, oh my god, oh my god, mate, we can't, we can't go in there. It says, it says no humans. And the other one's like, hey, come on, mate, we gotta get out of here. Brum has the smart noggin on because it says no humans, and he'd be like, I ain't a human. Now, I wonder how they actually got to film in here, because I thought this was maybe like a disused airport, because even allowing camera crews in here to do stuff like this, you know, some Toy Story 2 level stuff, I'm genuinely surprised. So we've established that Brum can fly, yet getting himself on this conveyor belt is too much. It's too unrealistic. What are you, stupid? I know it's for kids. I know. Believe me, I know. But you're telling me throughout this whole bit that these two here did not see nor hear these imbeciles floating around. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, that's some great camera work. Firstly, they get him in an air traffic control tower and they do these cuts, these zooms, the most ominous shots. You see Brum like, hey, you think you can escape? Well, guess what? You're wrong. I will find you. I will find you and I will hurt you. So these two somehow board a plane unnoticed, which, again, is baffling. <laughs> what? Everyone in Birmingham, I'm sorry, Big Town, is clearly insanely oblivious. This pilot, you know, is super concentrated. He didn't notice that two people somehow snuck into the cockpit, and sat behind him, Chuckling away, the tall one's like, Yeah, we're gonna escape, we're gonna flee to Panama to avoid taxes. And the other one's like, Keep it down, mate, keep it down, we're not supposed to be here, there's someone sat literally two feet away from us. So it seems like the baddies have won, they're on the plane, the plane's about to go on the runway to take off. What can Brum, I'll stress again, what can Brum, this tiny yellow remote control car, do about it? What do you think?
Are you, Are ready? you ready? What are you gonna do, Grom? For the most insane, most illogical, most physics breaking scene of your entire life? I hope you are, because here it comes. See that? Do you want to see it again? This tiny remote control car against a plane, a aeroplane moving down the runway to take off, or at least taxiing to the runway to take off at full pelt, and this car, this small yellow remote control children's character, is able to outpace, I tell you, outpace! This aeroplane at dizzying speeds. Even the baddies are shot like they go, oh my god, mate, look, he's going so fast. So Brum is able to get in front of the plane and the plane stops and screeches like a car. Because of course it would! And it's only now that the pilot's like, what? There's, there's people? And the two luggage people are like, oh my god, we're going to lose our jobs. <laughs> So the luggage people are unable to grab them for reasons. And they are only stopped because Brum circles them, pulls his somewhat angry face, revs his engine, and that that's it. They are beaten into submission. They can't, you know, Oh, mate, we're going to get away. Whoa, the car got in front of us. It revved its engine. It made a noise at me. Ah. That's a meme if I ever saw one. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So sure enough, Brum has returned the jewels from Blackpool Pleasure Beach and saved the day. But if you thought that episode was balmy, we haven't even touched the best bit yet. Have you forgotten about the closing theme? <laughs> This is the most, like, early 2000s sounding beat ever. It's corny. It's cringy. There's lots of madness going on. But you know what? I'm here for it. Everyone here is clearly going for it. Having a great time. Brum's just lapping it up. When I said he didn't want all the praise, I stand corrected. This is his reward. Every single time. You gotta remember in the 90s, like, the closing theme was just, like, a nice little arrangement. You know, nothing too, nothing too out there. It was just really sweet, you know, summed everything up. And now we've got this full-on pop song to send us out. It's balmy, man. Aw, God love this show. And then we cut back to stock footage because surely the children won't notice the difference. Brum returns home. And that is the end of the episode. Oh boy! So the airport adventure, you know, it's a fun time. It relaunched Brum for the new millennium for a whole, I guess, whole new generation of children then. And you know what? As much as people like to dog on these later two seasons, they still hold a lot of charm. I think at their heart, they still hold the core of what, like, Brum was about and the message it tried to get across and the themes it tried to get across. Did they make it, like, infinitely more cringy and more silly than they needed to? If you haven't figured it out by now, the answer's yes. I mean, I just found this weird, you know, the fact that Brum can fly, can outpace, you know, an aeroplane. And yes, I know it's a show for the under fives. I get that. But if you've not learned when we've looked at stuff like this, it's fun to make some jokes about it. But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the weirdness of Brum and the Airport Adventure. Maybe we'll tackle more episodes from the show's later years. We'll see. If you did enjoy it, leave a like on it. Be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments as well. I'd be curious to know what you have to say on this one. And subscribe to us if you're brand new as well. The support has been amazing recently. Please do keep that up. Keep sharing. Keep subscribing. I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show. And a special thank you to Macra, Ethan Carberry-Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Trev Hughes, AJ Mac 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, Evan Hart38, and Jen, our AMTV staff members.